think of is quit blowing holes in my ship. All right, so we're out in the orchard today and what we are doing is we are removing, this is an old soil moisture probe and we actually don't use this one anymore. So the new one we just removed because we had it here and what the soil moisture probe does, basically it's just measuring the moisture levels in the soil so that we can determine how much water we need to apply to the trees throughout the irrigation season. Well, the problem we were finding is the spot that we had it looked great. The trees looked great. They looked healthy because we were going according to that soil moisture profile, irrigating to that uh, level. But we had areas of our orchard that were looking stressed and looking bad. We're like, man, what's going on? And so we determined that the soil here um, is just, it's holding the water a lot better than that air there area is. So we are gonna move this soil moisture probe from this area to that area where the stressed out trees were so that we get a better reading. I can irrigate according to that area where the soil um, has just more, doesn't have as good holding capacity as the soil does. So, so what we did out here, I dug a hole and we're just kind of seeing what the soil looks like over here. So this is our PCA, our pest control advisor, as well as our crop advisor, John Fassler. What's going on, John? Hey, how's it going, guys? So John, what does the soil look like over here? Right here, you've got the, uh, this is the main horizon. Uh, this is really good soil. Uh, it's a San Joaquin series. And it's got uh, really good loam, uh, really good uh, water holding capacity. And then once you get down into here, you've got a change, and this is where it gets into, it's a decomposed granite layer. And so the water is coming down through here and it's holding very well. And then once it hits here, there's no water holding capacity and it just blows through. Okay. So yeah, what we're going to do now, we're going to go over to the area that we want to put the probe. We're going to dig down there and see what that soil moisture, that soil profile looks like. And then we can kind of determine where we want to put that, that, uh, that probe. So we'll go ahead and probably backfill this hole now and we'll move on to that next spot. Looks good. You can't even tell that we were here. No, we'll come through and we'll go over it again with the float, smooth it all out again. It'll be smooth as butter. So you can see it's a lot more shallow here. Over there we had three foot, here you got a foot and a half, maybe. So it was what you were expecting to see? Yeah, so you can see right here where the, where the layer changes. Uh, over there we had about, uh, over there we had about, you know, two foot, three foot. Here you got maybe, maybe half that. And uh, you can see, if you look over on this side, you can see how it's shattered a lot more. I mean, this is, this is almost back from when it got ripped. I mean, it's still very, very loose mm -hmm. and um, crumbling apart. Um, so this is just a lot more, it's tighter, but it's sandier at the same time. So it's just blowing through wherever it can. So that maybe the, my thinking on it is it kind of seems backwards. Like I'd almost think that area over there, this seems like it has a, a shallower hard pan mm -hmm. and maybe even a harder thicker hard pan yes, than that right. over there but yet you'd think that'd be the opposite you'd think this area wouldn't even have a hard pan if it was blowing through it so fast yes compared I, to over there i agree and that's so this is all shattered from the ripper i mean this is when you guys ripped this what seven years ago and it's um this will never i mean unless we get like some crazy amount of water on there it'll it'll never seal back up 100 percent. some of it will it's just interesting how you can see the further away you get from the, the water, like here in the middle where the water never hits, mm -hmm. you can definitely tell that it hasn't been it's able to settled. settle at all. It's kind of interesting to see. That's crazy. I mean, hey, John, let's talk about chemical prices. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
So this is our soil moisture probe. So this will go in the ground. I'll let John explain it. He knows how it works better than I do, but it's got a little solar panel on it that we'll have to clean off. Keeps power to it. Oh, yeah, get him! Get him! Get him! Oh. You look like a man on a mission. My hot pod just out. <laughs> You're running away from home? Yeah. <laughs> Can you explain a little bit more how it works? Yeah. So this is the actual probe itself. So this is a, this one happens to be metal. They come in plastic. They come in several other variations. Um, this one's pretty simple. It's an aqua check. Um, so it runs down. There's a circuit board in here that runs all the way down. And what it does is it shoots out sonar, or a radar actually, and it measures how much resistance there is in the soil for the water, and then it bounces for it to come and bounce back. And so once that bounces back, it goes up the cable, and it goes into here, and then it measures it, and uh, it gives us you know how much percent moisture there is in the in the soil, and then it sends it out to the uh, cell tower, and then it sends it to us. This little part right here is for the pressure sensor. So it senses whether we're irrigating or not. So we don't have to go out and check the pump to see if it's on all the time. So yeah, what that does, so like you said, it goes to a cell tower and then that'll actually send information to me. So I have an app on my phone that I can just plug into right here. So I just click on my ranch. So it shows me the, the soil moisture. So we have two probes. We have one for our younger block, one for our bigger block. And so it's showing me that our uh, lower or our smaller block is about 75.9 percentage moisture in the soil, um, which is still pretty good. And then this time of the year, the trees are going into dormancy anyway. It's gonna the the soil is gonna retain that moisture, and the, the trees are gonna retain that moisture as well. The big tree shows 24 percent, which usually we would panic about, but the soil probe has been out of the ground for uh, good for, the ground. for for quite for quite a while, <laughs> so uh, no need to panic. Um, and this app can also tell us. Um, like wind speed so for when I'm gonna go spray I don't want to spray over a certain uh, wind speed so I can go and check and it, it gives me like a forecast of what it kind of thinks the next few days uh, winds gonna be like what it is at that time uh, it also gives it alerts me like he said it alerts me when the pumps running when it's off I like them um, we've had we've had soil probes since we started seven years ago um, and we've we've liked them you can hear kind of hitting some hard pan yeah, there get a little crusty so he's digging out you know with the soil so that he can put the probe in but anyway so yeah we've had them for seven years we've used them so i really like them it helps me with determining how much water i need to apply to the trees like i said it helps me determine when i want to spray all these kind of things Ugh. gonna just put a little bit of tide in there <laughs> It's a poor man's water jug. <laughs> it's a poor man's water jug, like I said. It's just water. We're not pouring tide. We don't need to clean the trees. <laughs> Happy trees like I said, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people that watch this, and there's a lot of people who watch these farming channels gonna that will never going to, yeah, they're, they're going to see that and be like, why are they pouring tide into their soil? We're not. That's just a, a water jug. And it's been cleaned many, many times, right, John? Several. There's no residue left. Several. It's a couple years old. Exactly. So it smells good though. It drinks it does, it smells good. So we're gonna just make this orchard smell. Addition. What we're gonna do is I think what we're gonna do next year, we're just gonna throw some tide in when we got the pump running. We'll just throw it in where the where the water's going in and that way we can make sure the trees stay nice and clean, smell good. We don't want dirty trees, so you having fun, John? Oh that's what I do every day. I love this. I'm glad you do. Digging holes. Builds character. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tired of digging these holes, Grandpa. Yeah, I'm back oh, that's too damn bad. <laughs> Name that movie, folks. The trick is not to get it to splatter all over yourself. We're making chocolate milk. One more. So what we're doing here is we're taking the soil out of the uh, out of the auger hole, we put it into this bucket with our uh, water and uh, then we mix it up so it makes a slurry. 
and the reasoning for this is to make it all the same soil type and so there's no air pockets. If there's air pockets, it'll read off. It'll read drier than what it is. So by doing this, it helps alleviate that. So we take the slurry, dump it in the hole like that. Mmm. Yeah. Nice. Go full of chocolate milk. So then we take, uh, take the probe, set it in. We knock the excess out. So it... mm -hmm. That's facing the sun. Facing the sun. Oh, you broke oh, it, John. Yeah, John. that was pretty broke. Wow. <laughs> that was pretty broke. And done. Just like that. Just like that. So now, hopefully this next year, we'll get better accurate readings and determining how much water we need to apply so that these trees, because right now you can see that these trees do not have nearly as many leaves as where we were at over there and you can even tell that the soil here isn't as wet there's not as much moisture here as over there right on thanks john hey no problem all right guys thanks for watching we were able to get this done if you like what you saw please subscribe like comment all of the above i appreciate you guys taking the time to come and and watch this video we'll see you guys later